Okay, we're going to talk about respiratory disorders that are involving the lower respiratory structures. First, we're going to talk about infectious inflammatory diseases, um, and those are going to be found in Chapter 21 of your book. First one we'll talk about is acute bronchitis. Now, this is something you're probably all pretty familiar with. Um, the definition of acute bronchitis, and it's important to know these definitions because there's several different types of bronchitis, and if you can differentiate between chronic, acute, um, and others as we get along, um, the better you'll be. So the definition of acute is inflammation of the mucous membranes that line the bronchi and their branches. So if it involves the trachea, we're then looking at tracheobronchitis. If it just involves the bronchi and their branches, it's just acute bronchitis. Usually it begins as some other form of an upper respiratory infection, but it eventually extends all the way down the respiratory tract and infects all throughout the lungs as well. The secretory cells that produce mucus basically become super inflamed and just overproduce so much mucus. And so that's what starts irritating and causes that um, chronic cough then during acute bronchitis. The viral infections um, usually progress into birth of bronchitis. Um, to diagnose it, we want to get a sputum culture. Um, and our whole goal here is to rule out bacterial pneumonia. Because bacterial pneumonia is more deadly um, and it's a lot harder um, to treat and to get over than just a viral um, acute infection with bronchitis. Um, it can be very self-limiting, which means um, it lasts several days, um, but then it eventually kind of heals itself. Um, you get over it after a little while. So that's typically why a doctor won't prescribe anything to try to treat it or whatever. So it's not bad. Um, it's annoying, of course, because yeah, I mean, you're going to be coughing and uncomfortable. Um, but typically we just encourage rest, a lot of fluids, um, and just tell the patient to be um, just patient with their recovery. Um, so the signs and symptoms that you're going to see with acute bronchitis, they're going to have a fever and maybe some chills depending on how bad the infection gets. Um, they definitely will feel some malaise and a headache just because of you know, all that excess mucus production and, um, and just the discomfort that they have with the infection. Initially, you're going to notice a dry, irritating, non-productive cough. Um, and it's just that dry cough that, in, um, well, yeah, it's something that you hear um, most typically um, with patients who are not really producing a lot of that sputum or whatever, but it's really, really dry. Later on, the cough might become mucopurulent, which means um, you'll see them coughing up stuff, and a lot of times that sputum might be blood streaked, especially if their airway has become very irritated from the excessive coughing. Um, they can also have paroxysmal, which means recurrent or aggressive attacks of coughing that, um, that occur for quite a long period of time. Even once we um, control the cough and everything, every now and then it just keeps coming back more and more aggressive and that cough is really aggravating. Um, you might also notice some wheezing and maybe even some moist inspiratory crackles. Whenever you're listening to their lungs, it might just sound, you might be able to hear um, the sounds of that mucus production um, within the lungs from the infection. As a side effect of all of this coughing and um, the excess production of mucus and everything, you might also start noticing laryngitis, which if you remember from the upper respiratory infections, it's just the loss of the voice and the irritation and inflammation of the larynx. Um, and then the sinusitis type um, complications occur because of that excess mucus that gets lodged in your sinuses um, and they just feel like they just can never clear it out until the infection goes away. Best way to treat it is just put them on bed rest. Um, you probably want to give them some fever a medication um, like Tylenol or aspirin um, and probably some cough medicine as well just to help knock back the cough as much as we can. Now we might not be able to totally control the cough but if we can give them some um, just periods of rest from the excessive coughing then they'll be very very grateful. Okay so some antitestids will help. Um, we also want to increase their fluids. The whole purpose of increasing fluid is because fluids thin secretions and if we thin those secretions they're less likely of causing um, irritation and um, they're also less likely of lodging in their sinuses and it just creates more of a comfortable environment um, in their respiratory tract. Hum humidification is another way of um, producing um, fluids into the patient's system because that's um, humidifying the air by putting you know water molecules in the air. As they breathe that in it really does soothe the airway and makes it easier for them to breathe and hopefully reduces their cough also. Um, Dry air really aggravates a cough, and so once we humidify it, it really soothes their um, respiratory tract. We also um, want to see if um, if a 
bacterial infection is the cause of the acute bronchitis, we want to give them some broad spectrum antibiotics, um, especially if we start noticing any secondary infections developing, either in their lungs or their sinuses or their throat, anywhere. Okay, if we no start noticing some secondary infections just because um, their immune system is already being attacked, then we can give them some broad spectrum antibiotics to hopefully prevent those from getting really bad. Um, on an x-ray, you're going to be able to see the, the white patches where the bronchitis is affecting the patient, and here you can see that. Um, as a nurse, we want to encourage the patient to deep breathe um, and forcefully cough every two hours, because if we forcefully cough, hopefully we're clearing the secretions that can aggravate um, their respiratory tract and cause them to, to cough even more. Um, we want to encourage them to spit whatever they're able to cough up instead of swallowing it. If they swallow it, it goes into their GI tract and it can cause other problems there. But if they spit it out, first of all, we can get a sample of that, and second of all, it's ridding their body of that mucus. And we want to help prevent the spread of an infection by teaching them good hand washing techniques and covering their mouth when coughing and everything also. Um, here's a question. We like the questions. Pause it, see if you can answer it, and then I'll show the answers. Okay, here's the answer for that one. Okay, look at the second one. Here's the answer. All right, check yourself, and I'll be back in just a little while um, to talk about something else.